It's absolutely- but I think what you said a second ago, Sophie, is, is interesting. I heard, I saw somebody online say, I think it was tongue in cheek, but they said anybody who's had a borderline personality disorder friend in their life, understand what's, ha- what's happening from Meghan Markle's perspective toward Kate. Okay. Like she does seem to be very focused on her. To take any shots at Will and Kate in this documentary is pretty extraordinary. I mean, Harry used to be like their third wheel and they were very good to him. She's, she's been very kind to him. Why would they be taking shots at Will and Kate? You know, they're not responsible for this massive institution, not yet. Um, so she does seem to be obsessed with her because she raised her again in the Oprah interview in a way that we were told was dishonest. She, to your point a moment ago, that's interesting to me that you think this whole thing is is about her anger toward the Princess of Wales. It's just pure jealousy against Kate. This this entire Netflix deal, the entire reason she came out of the royal family is because she just cannot deal with the fact that there is another woman who is equally as beautiful, who is a whole lot more classy and a whole lot more talented and just better fit for the royal family than she is. And she cannot handle that. And that's this is all coming out of jealousy and of rage. And Harry's just sitting there and watching like a loser. I said, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. Hold, wait, first of all, you're not going to speed past that. Like you didn't just say what you just said. That's the thing, Harry. By the way, I mean, Leilani, on the, on the wardrobe front, uh, Megan wore tons of color while she was over there in the UK and part of the royal family. We, we have plenty of evidence of it. Uh, and she, by the way, because I have crack producers, she wore tons of camel and black and white prior to joining the royal family and after. So I don't know what, like, this is just so classic her. You know, look look at the sacrifices I tried. I tried so hard to fit in. That doesn't make sense. But those mean, stiff royals were feeding me to the slaughter. But, you know, muted colors are also in fashion at the times. You know, a camel coat, you're out in the countryside, you would wear That's something true. muted. I mean, it's all for me. And this is the whole thing. It has been years and years of poor me, poor me, all about her, you know, and and then what she wants to do is blame it on racism and blame, you know, the palace, royalty, um, then the media, and then actually the British people, which you see happening in episode two, Uh. when she starts to try and say Britain's racist because of rows over illegal immigrants, not, not legal immigrants, illegal immigrants, and it paints this picture for England, you know, and Britain being racist. But when we go back to it, the reason people don't like her is because she has been all about me, 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 me. Well, duh. And she thinks that she can relate to people. Maybe she thinks, oh, it makes me more relatable if I have problems that I can complain about because right now there is this whole thing of competitive victimhood that's going on. Points for um, points for racism, points for... Um, uh, I'm being put on, points for being bullied. So it's all to me, I think it's a, so much of it's made up, but she can play on these like victim points, compete with other, you know, not real victims of like abuse or anything. But Stop it. Get some help. But she plays the victim. And so for me, the turning point was when she was in South Africa and she was doing a tour. She was at a home with um, very vulnerable girls and it was an ITV uh, journalist that said to her, you know, Megan... Um, how are you doing? She's like, no one ever asks if I'm okay. So that was a f-ing lie. And it's like, whoa, for so me, that was like, hold on a minute. You have not only money, but you also have a healthy child. I think it was one at the time. And a husband that loves you dearly. Right? Um, and a mother that loves you. And you're, you're playing this poor me, I'm a victim with real, you know, vulnerable people around you that you're supposed to be on tour with. And I think that was a turning point for a lot of people when it became me, 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 oh, poor me. But then she'll blame it on racism. And it's the it's the weirdest, craziest thing. Oliver the Ornament is a seven book series about one family's collection of ornaments. The first book begins Thanksgiving night while the last book takes place on Christmas morning. Each book introduces a new holiday ornament and weaves in the story of that ornament. It's a good idea, right? Yeah, right. Super cute for the whole family. The books teach kindness, and they have lots of plot twists and cliffhangers. This is a great tradition for your entire family. Parents, grandparents, kids, grandkids, they're all going to look forward to the next 
family story night. It's a nice way to get everybody together. And maybe some hot cocoa mixed in, maybe a warm fire, maybe some eggnog for the grownups. It's great for the holiday season. Oliver the Ornament has won all kinds of awards and accolades. First Lady Melania Trump selected this book to be read at Children's National Hospital in Washington, D.C., continuing a 75-year-long tradition. Nice. Go to OliverTheOrnament.com today. OliverTheOrnament.com today. Hit the big Shop Now button on the page, and when you buy the Oliver the Ornament set, you're going to get a whole bunch of extra goodies, including audiobooks. Are you sure about that? Use the code MEGAN at checkout. Oliver the Ornament, O-R-N-A-M-E-N-T dot com. Use code MEGAN at checkout. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes. Fact. Speaking of martyrs and people who have been really unfairly put upon, let me ask you about Meghan Markle. <laughs> Is y'all right upstairs? <laughs> One of the great marches of all time. <laughs> Poor thing. <laughs> Her castle was so small. What do you mean by that? Um, <laughs> she is apparently getting back into the podcast lane thanks to this far left pro women lemonada company. Richard Eden over in the Daily Mail, your old hot, has a piece today mm. saying uh, they're struggling to get this thing out of the starting blocks. No podcasts are even expected anytime this year, and not until 2025. Okay. And um, the podcast, by the way, is going to celebrate the joys of cooking, or at least something she's doing. Um, her Netflix show, I guess, is going to celebrate the joys of cooking, gardening, entertaining, and friendship, Piers. She's going to be teaching us how to be a good friend. Nice. I, I can't yeah. wait to find out from Meghan Markle what that's like. Well, well, there's one of the many friends that she cut off <laughs> spectacularly <laughs> the moment she got a, a bit of royal action, uh, along with her entire family, of course, on both sides, apart from her mother. Yeah, right. I don't think Meghan Markle's in any position to be lecturing anybody about friendship. Uh, I mean, it always made me laugh that the Archerwell website, their charitable foundation, uh, says it's dedicated to compassion. I mean, it's, it's hard to imagine two people who've been less compassionate in the last few years to the ones around the, the, their loved ones than these two, right? This is two people who trashed all their family. And? You know, whether it was her father or whether it's Harry's entire family at a time when Prince Philip and the Queen were both dying. Um, it, there they were on national television, from Oprah Winfrey to Netflix to whatever, whoever, you know, as the Spotify guy put it, whatever grift they could get paid for, up they were trashing their families. Are you sure about that? So the idea now that they're reduced, or that certainly Meghan Markle is now reduced from somebody who, you know, Remember, Megan, she had a she had a, a fairy tale royal wedding that was seen around the world. You know, the carriages drawn down to Windsor Castle and so on. It was an amazing event. Everyone in this country, I'm in the UK at the moment, everyone loved that marriage when it happened. There was a universal support for it, euphoria. It was only their behaviour in the first year of their marriage when they began to behave rankly hypocritically, they're lecturing about poverty whilst having half a million dollar baby showers, you know, to lecturing us about the need to watch our carbon footprint and using Elton John and George Clooney's private jets like taxi cabs. You got me. <laughs> um, and it was the constant hypocrisy that they got picked up on by the media and then they couldn't handle the criticism from the media and then it all turned hostile. Then they started suing everybody and the whole thing got so toxic, eventually they just say, We've had enough of this. We're not going to do any more dreary duties on a wet Wednesday, which is what you have to do to, you know, to earn your royal titles in the estimation of the public. Uh. And they decamped off to Montecito, bought themselves a massive mansion. And they were supposed to be doing it, Megan, if you remember, you know, this was going to be their liberation, their freedom, and it was supposed to make them happy. I've never seen two more miserable people who never stop whining and suing absolutely everybody. Okay, I'm listening. You have my attention. Yes. In the pretense that this is because they found their liberation and freedom. If you're so damn happy and free and liberated, well, shut up. Stop whining and complaining about everything. But they're obviously not happy. And it's obviously been diminishing returns where when you trash your family again and again and again, eventually there's not much left to say. Fact. 
And people don't really want to hear it. It's like the Spotify guy said, they're just a pair of grifters who just want to trash their family for loads of money and not put a shift in to do proper work. You and I know how hard it is to do this kind of thing properly. You know, it's a lot of work with a dedicated team and you put the hours in and you've got to be creative and high energy and really put, put graft in. Okay. These two wanted to do massive deals with companies and then not do any work. Nobody wants to see her next podcast. Nobody listened to the first one. And that's for this thing she's now doing with the ridiculously long name that no one can remember. Mm. <laughs> well, she's going to try and Riviera, the new, the new American, Marvel. whatever. I have to write to yeah. American well, Riviera Orchard. Yeah. <laughs> see footnote 47 for the remainder of the name. Boring. Right, and she's now got all her celebrity, you know, sort of B-list, C-list mates putting out Instagram <laughs> posts about her her jam, and it's like, That's how it. the mighty fall? This was a this was a woman who had it all in this country, who literally had it all, and is now flogging jam from from her kitchen in Montecito. <laughs> what? While her husband runs around fuming about absolutely everything and everyone because he knows in his gut he knows what he's lost. And eventually, those chickens will come home to roost. Fact. Mm. And then she will be touting their eggs on her stupid website where she's wearing evening gowns while walking around her <laughs> mansion that we're supposed to feel sorry for her because she's in. I love it. But the, on the grifter subject, one of the funniest things that was Bill Simmons, who said that at Spotify, I've never, mm. never seen such a pair of grifters. They wouldn't do any work. Why? Why? She got paid all this money. She barely did anything. Him too. Yeah. And now she signs this pod deal with this lemonada. We're not getting a podcast for years. And then she decides to sign this deal with Netflix. She's done nothing other than now this show she's going to do on cooking and friendship. <laughs> finally. Okay, we'll believe it when we see it. And then finally, mm. she's got her little Riviera thing going. We're so far, we've had one jar <laughs> A strawberry <laughs> jam. <laughs> so lazy. It's, it's, the whole thing. It, it's, it's, it's sort of lazy and, and, and a bit pathetic, you know. God, please, no, no. This is somebody who demands that we use the title Duchess of Sussex. I come from Sussex, which is a county in the south of England. I've spent more time in Sussex in the last month than Meghan Markle has spent in her entire life. <laughs> She has she's no your, actual She's right. your ruler, Piers. I didn't know that. She's your... She, she, she ain't my ruler, Megan Kelly. Uh, she's a, she is somebody who... Listen, as I've said to you, I think, many times before, if they actually want to do this kind of thing and trade themselves around as sort of, you know, celebrities and do that sort of circus, then they can do it. But they can't do it with the royal title. Fact. They yeah. shouldn't be using the royal titles of Duke and Duchess of Sussex, bestowed on them by the monarchy, an institution they constantly complain about and trash whenever they get the chance. Fine, if you want to go off and be celebrities in, in California, do it. But don't trade on the titles. That was easy. Every time I see her demanding to be called Duchess of Sussex, I laugh. Nobody in Britain calls her that. It's Meghan Markle. You know, she got lucky, met her prince, dragged him out of the bosom of his family, dragged him away from the monarchy, which bestowed those titles on them, and has now ruthlessly with him exploited those titles for massive personal gain. What do you mean by that? And I think it's disgusting and hypocritical. They shouldn't be allowed to do it. I hope that King Charles, who obviously is massively distracted by his illness, but I hope that King Charles at some stage just has that conversation and says, you can't keep the titles, I'm sorry. Come on now, dog. But you can't keep demeaning the, the status of being a member of the royal family and attacking the family and the monarchy and retain your titles. You can just be Harry and Meghan and see how you get on, by the way, when you're no longer mm. royals. <laughs> because the answer yeah. is not very far. That's right. Who wants your jam then? Did you know Fast Growing Trees is the biggest online nursery in the U.S. with more than 10,000 different kinds of plants and over 2 million happy customers? What is he doing? Well, now you can grow lemon, avocado, olive, or fig trees. They have house plants too. Fast Growing Trees makes it easy to order online and ship directly to your door in one to two days. You can even speak to their specialists for a free consultation. Boring. You can find the perfect fit for your specific climate, location, and needs. Whether you're looking... 